seen promptly with that old college spirit. Cold weather or hot, the stands fill up whether it's Podunk High School with a flying wedge or high power U with a streamlined single T and flankers all the way out to Chicago. And here they are, the football headliners of another smashing season. It's still summertime in the suntan belt when Miami, a headline hurricane from Florida, kicks off to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. The rah-rah bumptier of college football has begun. Ken Owen fullbacks it upfield on the first play of the season. Owen kicks. It's past the hurricane secondary and down on the Florida seven. Miami picks up four, then kicks out of danger. It's a high, soaring boot. Ken Owen calls for a fair catch. He's hit, and the ball's away. A tech man has it. It's Paul Rotenberry. It looks, it is, a touchdown for the Golden Tornadoes. There's a penalty on the play for hitting the receiver on a fair catch, but Tech refuses it. Favorite Florida boys react explosively. Don Bossola cracks off a 12-yard second-half score for Miami. The score moves seven to six. In the fourth period, the Hurricane is still trying hard to low. Bonfiglio passes, but Tex Jimmy Morris intercepts. He's off. 25 yards for the score that closes the eye on this Hurricane. 14 to six. Georgia Tech on top in an upset. jerseys, detours to Maryland. The Bruins ball, Holloway's got it for a 31-yard game. Holloway hits the line. He stopped. On the next play, he stopped again, and he fumbles. A great All-American center, Bob Pellegrini, recovers for Maryland. This game becomes a battle of giants. Frank Tamborello passes it for Maryland, and Healy takes the toss for the first down on the U-Prime's 26. Camarello tosses to Bellum, who picks up his blockers for the run that makes it Maryland 7, UCLA nothing. For the Southwest Conference title in the tea leaves, Texas Christian nevertheless runs into trouble with Alabama. After a scoreless half, however, Jim Swink capers for 65 yards. It's just the first of three for Jim, who's a real All-American halfback. Texas Christian goes into the fourth quarter full of power, most of it named Swink, who slams eight yards ahead with each carry. Jim is a fast break, cotton bowl bound, as TCU doubles Alabama 21 to nothing. turn out 75,000 strong as the Longhorns tangled with the Sooners. Oklahoma, heading for its second untied and undefeated season in a row, has the ball. Here's the power that makes Oklahoma the top team in many national polls. It's Tommy McDonald going 28 yards and six points for the Sooners. There's a lateral on this play for Dennett Morris and 19 yards for Oklahoma. On the next play, McDonald waltzes across for touchdown number two. Texas, like just about everybody, can hold the Sooners. Oklahoma goes to the Orange Bowl undefeated with 29 consecutive victories and 10 Big Seven championships in a row. Oklahoma 20, Texas nothing. defeated Spartans at East Lansing, Michigan. The Irish are unscored on in 11 games. State's Earl Morrow, number 21, All-American quarterback, keeps the ball for a good game. Clarence Peaks covers the last three yards. State 7, Notre Dame, nothing. It's still the first quarter. The Irish quarterback, Paul Harlan, throws to Don Schaefer. Now here's a great play. 
Horn is almost smothered, but he gets it off to Jim Morris, 40 yards downfield. And Morris is over. In the third quarter, the Spartans drive and drive. Paul Kowalczyk flashes away, pounding out 23 yards. Jerry Plenos goes over. The Spartans stop rises, rolls ball high. Michigan State 21, Notre Dame 7. Georgia is the scene again as two giants of the Southeastern Conference meet. Auburn's Jimmy Elliott snags Howell Tufts pass for 29 yards. Tech's favored, but the plainsmen don't seem to know it. Alton Shell climaxes a 61-yard drive. In the second half, Tech's trailing 7-6. Wade Mitchell slips the ball to George Holger. And here we go, 59 yards, and Tech leads 12-7. Auburn's ball, fourth quarter. Tops passes to sophomore and Jimmy Phillips. 20 yards. There's an upset in the making as Tops tops an 80-yard march with a game-winning touchdown. Auburn beats Sugar Bowl bound Georgia Tech for the first time in 15 years. 14 to 12. Taupin shoots a touchdown pass to Gus Dennis in Archbold Stadium, Syracuse. And Albright of Syracuse fires to Don Allhouse for 14 yards. This time Mark Hoffman heaves. It's Allhouse again. Six points for Syracuse. But Maryland is too busy tallying to hold Syracuse down. It's eight yards here and 30 yards there. With Ed Barrett, a high man on the nation's totem pole for scoring, breaking loose all day. The Orange goes down before the unbeaten, untied Atlanta Coast Conference champs and Orange Bowl contenders. Maryland 34, Syracuse 13. for its first win over the Irish in 11 years. But Notre Dame gets to the midi three. Big Paul Hornung smashes across, and the Irish are running before the win. Don Schaefer, Notre Dame's All-American fullback, contributes to the South Bend Entertainment. Substitute Aubrey Lewis on his first play of the game gets a pretty block by Schaefer and skirts the end for 12 yards and a score. Quarterback Paul Hornung, who is the big Irish star today, laterals to Morse. Now Hornung passes to Gene Kavish. Navy's perfect season has been torpedoed. Notre Dame 21, Navy 7. It's a year when every one of the Big Ten has their sights set on taking the title from Ohio State. Badgers Levenhagen nips the Buckeyes for six points. The ball goes to Miller. He finds Levenhagen for 25 yards. Thomas plunges. It's over. And the title holders trail 14 to nothing. Ohio rises from the tomb. It's Roseboro's ball. Number 40 strikes up the middle. It's a touchdown. Still far behind, Ohio sends Jim Roseboro, number 43, downfield. Look at him go. 30 yards that time. The ball goes to number 40 again. Hop along, Cassidy, they call him, and here's the reason why. Now the senior Cassidy and his protege Roseboro collaborate. It's hop along to Jim to the one yard line. It's goal to go and Frank Galwick goes. Touchdown. 
The badger comes out of his hole when Wisconsin's Billy Lowe breaks loose. It looks like a Wisconsin score. But no, he's down on the two-yard line. And Ohio State wins the game 26-16. Unbeaten West Virginia wants revenge on Pitt for spoiling an all but perfect season the year before. But the Panthers are on the foul. It's the last quarter, and Pittsburgh's Pasadena snags a pass for a first down. The score's 19-0, Pitt's favor, as Pasadellas gets the ball again. This time he goes 15 yards. The ball goes to Lewis, and West Virginia's glimmering hopes go out completely. Pitt 26, the Bottomiers nothing. Time short, and the Bottomiers are throwing all over the place. This one wasn't caught, but there's interference on the play. West Virginia has it on the six-yard line. Then pandemonium, the crowd thinks the game is over. There go the goalposts. West Virginia scores, and since there are no goalposts, the extra point is given to them. The Sugar Bowl team wins. Pittsburgh 26, West Virginia 7. Frank Merrill went to Yale a long time ago. Roy Slippin goes to Princeton today. And that's the story of Yale and Princeton. It's Yale's ball as Lopata is on the Lauk's pass. Yes, Lauk's again on a keep. He fumbles, and a striped tiger recovers on its own one-yard line. That's Margaret Truman and Governor Minor of New Jersey in the stands. Out of the season with a bad knee, Yale's perennial jinx Royce Slippin can still flip one. And New comes down with a nine-yard game. Then Flippin takes the ball over, his ninth touchdown against Yale during his career. The Bulldog growls, but he doesn't bite. Princeton beats Yale 13 to nothing. The Buckeyes, fighting hard for the Big Ten title, try for a field goal. And it's good, three points. Along Cassidy, moving right along, lives up to his name. Cassidy goes over. He fumbles, but the touchdown is allowed. The Buckeyes lead with nine points. It's a crazy game. Michigan's Jim Maddock fades into his own end zone. His pass is caught, but it's a five-yard loss and a safety. Two points for Ohio. The game goes wild and tempers grow hot, but nothing can change that score. Ohio 11, Michigan nothing. In the closing moments, the crowd rushes the goalpost before Ohio can get its final score for the victory, 17 to nothing. So, Ohio State, which can't go to the Rose Bowl, bounces the Wolverines out, and the Big Ten season closes in a flurry of soft snowballs and hard words. comes the big football game of the great American family, Army versus Navy. The middies watch proudly before the 56th meeting of the service schools, then the crowd is waiting for the kickoff. Army in dark jerseys, Navy in white, and here it goes. George Welch passes, fullback guest receives, and the seven-yard gain ends on the one-yard line, goal to goal. And Welch stuns Army with a first-quarter touchdown. Army coach Blake looks bleak as the cadets go into the third quarter trailing, but then Tom Bertman tears off 12 yards. captain crabs into the hole for three. Army, with its surprising running attack functioning perfectly, sends Ubell back into the line, and Army goes into the lead seven to six. From here on in, Army is in complete charge. They pick up 12 yards, never passing, running all the time. No, 
John Hollander, once an All-American end, now a field general par excellence, rolls the ball out to Pete Lash. He's out and away. An Army underdog against the mighty Navy scores one of the big upsets of the year. The score remains 14 to 6, and the cadets stream on the field at Philadelphia's Memorial Stadium. They give their heroes the conqueror's treatment. And that's the final gun on the season's football headliners.